Wayfeather Media presents Claire Voyaging. Hello. Hello. Welcome back. We're happy that you are with us today. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, yep. <laughs> right, Frank? Uh huh. Hey, Lauren. Yes. What are we talking about today? This is our debrief from my Reiki weekend. Dear listener, Lauren went, uh, she did her own clairvoyaging over the weekend. And she went to a Reiki workshop with the famous Juliana Davis. Also, she goes by Jules. Uh, she owns a company called Auralux. She is a qualified psychic medium and a master of multiple types of Reiki. She operates out of Redondo Beach, California. And there's a million other things I could say about Jules because we looked her up quite a bit before Lauren attended this class. Lauren, how many people were in the class with you? There were 12 people in the class. There was a nurse. There was a social worker, massage therapist, a couple people that have just psychic gifts that they were trying to use as like Maybe they're, you know, wanting to have a practice or something. Um, and then a couple of people that are just wanting to learn how to heal. So it was it was a big different group of people. Everyone was very nice. It sounds just, like a lot of people involved in, I might have told you this already, in like the service industry, which I'm I'm sure like knowing Reiki would help with that to a certain extent. Yeah. There were a lot of people just interested in wanting to heal others as well as themselves, but it was really a lovely group of people wanting to to help other people. And the setting, super cool Redondo Beach. Two days. What was day one? What did day one consist of? You walk you walk into the space and what happens? You set up your yoga mat or whatever thing that you're going to sit on all day. And you have like a pillow, blanket. She did an invocation, which for whatever reason, well, I guess that's my sensitivity coming in. I was immediately crying and we hadn't even said barely hello to each other. So that was just like right off the bat. I just had to be okay with the fact that I was going to be immediately vulnerable. And I just was like, look, this is part of my journey. That's fine. Like, so I had to talking like ug ugly cry or what, what is this? No, just like tears were definitely streaming down my face. As soon as the invocation was over, I went and like grabbed a tissue and then everyone introduced themselves. Oh God. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It got to me. I was like maybe the sixth or seventh person to introduce myself. And I didn't even I didn't even have a reason for why I was crying. So it was just like, OK, I'm going to just own this. And like, this is me, um, because I've said before, I don't like walking into new settings where I feel really uncomfortable and I feel like it's the first day of kindergarten or something like I get really shy but I'm not a shy person, but in a new setting, I'm like, hello. And if I'm too extroverted, then I feel like I'm not quite being myself. It feels like I'm going to crawl out of my skin. But this so was obviously like the, the, the in between is just to cry before you even introduce yourself. Yeah, that was just like ripping off a Band-Aid. It sure. was like, hi, I'm Lauren. I'm crying already. It felt like almost I made my own icebreaker. I was laughing about it and it got everybody to kind of like laugh too. And so then there's at some point there was a meditation. We learned the history of Reiki. We got into the different hand placements and techniques. So hold on. Hand placements. What do you what do what what are we doing? What is Reiki? What is it? What is it? Okay, Reiki is Ray is spiritually guided and key means life force energy. So key is like the the word in Japanese. It's similar to chi, which is in Chinese. So it just means life force energy. So reiki means spiritually guided life force energy. And what do you what's the execution of it look like? What do you do? Oh, I'm putting my hands on different parts of someone's body like their head or their shoulders or and why are you whatever. doing you're moving the energy from their head mm -hmm. to their feet and clearing out any extra energy 
it's helping give attention to certain parts of your body that need healing or attention in some way, and you're moving it down. So you're clearing it out from your head to your feet. Okay. So you have innately, people. everyone has like Reiki energy, but this is, what is this? This activates something? No, we don't innately have Reiki energy. You just have to have access to it and it has to be given to you by a teacher that can give you the proper tools to use it and activate it. Okay. So, okay. and what was the specific type of Reiki you were learning here? Usui. Okay. Usui Holy Fire. And what makes that different from other Reikis? Wow, this is a lot of, I just learned all this stuff. So, um, every different energy. It, it, there's there's different energies so like you can work with karuna reiki or but you learn that after you learn usui because it's stronger and more powerful and these energies are just floating around waiting for the waiting for the taken yeah all right they're they're just life force energies that are ready to be grabbed it's giving you this like universal energy that is all around us and when you're scanning do you are you feeling anything or what is it so there's something called biosin scanning um you put your hand over someone's auric field you're feeling their aura and once you have the reiki activated you're feeling their aura for like do i sense any temperature changes like is it is there a spot that's hotter or colder or maybe you feel little prickles in your hand that feel like electricity or like pops or something like that so you have to do the attunement and then you get to try the biosyn scanning and see if you feel anything and at first i was like oh no i'm broken it doesn't work <laughs> i was like scanning my this partner you're like partnered up with somebody to to try it to do a practice and I didn't feel anything. And I was like, am I doing it right? And then I felt like a couple little spots on my hand that felt kind of cold, almost like if you put your hand up to the car air conditioner, like not on full blast, but just like, oh, that feels a little bit cooler. And and what would that what would that indicate? That would indicate that there's something in their body that is that needs a bit of attention or there's something in their auric field that's telling you like you know, if it's around their head or their their heart, it needs attention and you need to give it Reiki energy. Do you have to n- know? Do you have to know what it is or can you just? No, you don't have to know. And you're not supposed to diagnose anything. It's just like this is calling my attention and it needs me to stay in this area to give it the healing energy, give it the the power. <laughs> She didn't call it power. I'm like, <laughs> I've got the power. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers or something. <laughs> like, I'm re- I'm paraphrasing in a major way. This is a, your level one, or what are you now? I'm Le- level two. Level two. Okay. Certified. One, one, level one, day one, level two, day two. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. you're learning. This has been three days. This is all like, I don't know. I'm practicing and. It's fresh, refresh. Yeah. So I did the scanning on on my partner and I was like, oh, there's some like like cold spots. I do feel that. And without even touching her body, my hands were like a couple of inches away and um, she had her eyes closed. And when she opened her eyes afterwards, she's like, oh, I felt some like warm sensation in this area, like or, or over my heart or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's cool, because that's where I was giving you the Reiki energy. I was like holding it over that spot. I felt a cold spot here. So it felt like that needed some attention. Um, So getting that validation was pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. Especially if you feel like you're not doing anything. Um, But that's also going into like the intuition side of it. For me, I'm like, if that's how it's presenting for me, then I just need to follow that and listen to that guidance. And like, that's where I'm being led to. What do you mean that that's like the, the temperature difference? Yeah, like if I'm feeling it as cold, I was doubting it. I was like, this is just like the air, the AC is on and I'm feeling like the air flowing from (laughs) like, I was just, you know, at first you're so, you're really questioning, or at least I was questioning, is this actually a thing? Does it work? Am I, am I broken? Did it not work for me? And then the more I practiced or tried it, the more I realized like, oh, 
that is that is a thing. That is something. And now, since I've been home and I've tried it a couple of times on Frank. On you, me? Me? Yeah. And on our daughter, just like make her calm before bed. I'm like noticing, oh, this is, I am feeling like cold over this area. I had a headache uh, probably like from allergies or something. We get really bad allergies around this time. And uh, Lauren said, let me Reiki you. No joke. I was like standing. We we're just standing in the kitchen. Just a quick sesh. And like uh, within, uh, what was it? Like 10 minutes or something? No, not even. Yeah. First of all, I like f- felt something. It definitely felt heat. I definitely, and I heard some like weird popping in my ear. Which oh, was, yeah. That you was, kept asking me if I was moving my hands. And I was like, I am not moving at all. My hands are just over your ears, like not even touching you. And it was very strange. But then, uh, yeah, 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes later, my headache was gone. And that was really exciting. Oh, pff, I hate headaches. <laughs> but it was really affirming and like exciting to know, like, whoa, it's only been three days since I started learning this and I helped your head. You did. That's so cool. And, you know, I think we'd mentioned in one of the, the prior episodes that like all parts of me hurt sometimes. It's probably stress related to a certain extent. But uh, other than that, like, yeah, I have like anxiety and stuff like that. So I've been excited for Lauren to get into this so that I can uh, abuse her new powers. Reap the benefits. Rake in the benefits. <laughs> yeah. So just to stick on day one of level one training, I slept so hard that night. I have a Fitbit where you can see your sleep score and your sleep activity and stuff. And I went to bed at like 11. It shows that I was awake for one minute. And then it's like I fell off a cliff into deep sleep for like 50 minutes. The the deep, the uh, she, Lauren falls into an abyss. Yeah. Normally. But she showed me her, uh, her sleep score for that night. And we were looking at her, uh, her deep sleep numbers and she was uh she wasn't with us anymore (laughs) yeah i was under the sea (laughs) (laughs) all right so day one how'd you feel going into day two really peaceful i my headache was gone i got such a good rest and then i was ready i was sore though too sitting on the floor Sitting is hard. Yeah, sitting is sitting on the floor is I'm I just I'm not good at it, I guess. It hurt my body. I'm old. No, we're just not <laughs> uh flexible. And we should be. Yeah, that probably I guess goes, that's it. You know, we we probably should do a yoga thing at some point for this show. Yeah. Uh, that's like part of it, right? Body mind syncing. You gotta yeah. do that kind of thing. Yeah. There oh there was a yoga instructor that was one of the students. Oh uh, yeah, see? Yeah. Um, but I was very ready going into day one and then it was cool because like we got in there and it was like two minutes. She's like, OK, we're going to do this. It's called the Holy Love Experience. And she was like, lay <laughs> down. Isn't that a Prince concert? <laughs> um, Thanks for laughing. You're welcome. And she's like, lay down. And I was like, yes. And it's just re- I don't know. I've never had an experience where I get to just lay down and not do anything and just be guided into deep meditation and just receive like beautiful loving energy she was like here you go i'm gonna send this reiki energy over to you so enjoy (laughs) just like (laughs) bon appetit (laughs) like i saw like shapes and I don't know. At some point during the weekend, I saw like the silhouette of a coyote or a wolf or something like that. I saw angel wings at some point. I think I said in another episode that I don't have good meditation skills. So you're you're just working on them. I'm working on them. Yeah. But this was like a real practice in meditation. Like, actually, you know what? There was a moment where I got not scared, but like, whoa, I'm about to go away and not in like, I'm going to fall asleep. It was like, I don't know. I don't really have that feeling when I do meditation. So this was like deeper meditation than I'm used to. And that's great. That was interesting feeling. Oh, and also at one point I felt like energy come through my body in a very calming way where I almost, it was like 
this like white she said like envision this like white bright light or whatever uh, filled with love or something and at some point I felt like it went through my body and I kind of had a second where I felt like pure euphoria and almost like I was floating for a second or something it was really cool it sounds very nice it was so peaceful <laughs> yeah yeah it's funny too because like it feels like a quite a skill to get to uh, experience that level of peaceful uh in a room full of strangers so uh, so you had mentioned well, is, hold on. The wrap up day two. So, yeah, day two, we had that meditation. I learned how to send Reiki from a distance. You can send Reiki to someone that's not in the room or even like is across the country. It's a, it's helpful if you use a surrogate, like a stuffed animal or a pillow or something. Stuffed animal is helpful because they have like are like limbs and whatever. But the way we learned it was Jules had panda bears. <laughs> we, okay so stuffed, we learned animals. stuffed animals yeah yeah stuffed panda bears yes we had stuffed panda People bears are gonna think that you have you know endangered species cruising around uh your, yeah. your office she brought in volunteers from the san diego zoo <laughs> and <laughs> they handed out bamboo <laughs> So you have a partner that's sitting across the room from you so you have their name in your mind and you like tap the bear saying like this is this person Instead of just being a bear and you do all the same things, you scan their auric field, you put your hand on certain parts of their body on the bear's head or whatever, and the person feels those things. So it was really cool because it's silly. I was like, okay, just trust this. It's fine. I was feeling cold spots over the bear's neck. And I'm like, oh, this needs a little bit of attention. So I would put spots in, the, I would hold my hands over his neck. When I talked to my partner after the fact, he was like, oh, I was feeling a lot of heat around my neck. And I was like, whoa, that's so cool. I was feeling that you needed attention there. And he said that he had thyroid cancer four years ago. He's a survivor of cancer. And that's where his radiation treatment was. That was his radiation area. So that was really cool to know that, like, he was receiving Reiki in that area. His body was still saying, like, yeah, it needs some healing still because who knows what radiation continues to do or, you know, what his cells needed or something. Yeah. But that was really super fascinating. That is to a know, trip. Yeah, that I was feeling that somehow. Yeah. Through a bear. Which sounds like so ridiculous. Listen, down by the bayou, they call that a voodoo doll. But I know. Yeah, is... but it's you know, it's all just like Reiki can do no harm. Sure. It's all just complementary to other healing modalities or whatever. But um, yeah, the bear. We learned about the symbols, which are secret. Um, you can't show anyone what they are because they won't know what to do with them. So you don't show them what they look like unless they've been attuned and can actually... What? What do you do with the symbols? How does it? You can use your hand to put them in your palm and then you like, like tap them into your palm or you can do it over your own body to put it into your auric field. You like draw them with your hand, like with your whole hand. So, um, but you can only do it if you have been activated or if, if they've been activated. <laughs> It, Which uh, saying what, it all like what do you mean if they've been if if the if, symbols have been activated? How do, how do you because you've been attuned? Okay, okay. And the symbols only come on level in level two, so you don't get them level one. You just talk about them on level one, and then in level two you get the access to using them to activate Reiki. Let's talk takeaways from the actual uh, class and working with with Jules. How was Jules? We didn't talk about her much. Jules is awesome. Yeah? Yeah. She's got this really calming, knowing energy. She does crystal healing and sound bath healing. She has access to animal Reiki. She teaches all this stuff. She's just like a very knowledgeable person. And when we were looking for classes for Lauren to attend, I got excited because I saw that she's a bit of a punk rock fan. And uh, she was like going to shows that I would have gone to, like Lagwagon and No Effects. And well, I think she worked in the music industry. Oh, did she? Yeah, 
I don't know what she did, but oh, that's cool. Yeah, she she mentioned that. So maybe she was a maybe uh, she was like doing you know like psychic mm-hmm. rocker. <laughs> yeah, she's probably done Reiki on a lot of the the band members that you you're a fan of. Probably, she probably rakes out. <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, the the she was great. I couldn't I couldn't recommend her or the class enough. All right. All right. Now that so it's done. It's done. It's you, done. I have the Reiki within me. You did it. Now what's next? Is there like a next level? How do you where do you where do you take this? So if I want to become a Reiki master, I have to wait six months between level two and master level, because they want to make sure that you know how to use the symbols that you've been working with the energy because you learn more symbols in the master level and you learn the ability, you gain the ability to do attunements or placements for other people. They call them ignitions. And that's like what gives you the ability to attune somebody else. Will you ignite me? Sure. When you can. I'll attune you. Thank you. Yeah. Can I have you, to wait six months, though. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Right. But th- and she this is separate maybe from maybe the... five, maybe five months. But any any earlier than that, and she doesn't think you're ready. Question. Yeah. What are you planning on doing with this? What's next for you? Boy, oh boy, I don't know. I feel very drawn to learn the master level one because it's three. It's three days. Sorry, I'm going to leave you with the kids again, and I'm going to go meditate for it's three days. fine. They're my kids. They're lovely kids. <laughs> I don't need any help. Right. Sarcasm. We have an almost two-year-old. He is, uh, he's getting real cranky these days. But anyway. And I found out over the weekend that the hard way, he gets car sick. Yeah. And um, I'll let you uh, fill in the details with your, with your minds, listener. <laughs> But um, I, I do want to learn master Reiki um, or the master level. And I don't know. I'm, I'm open to potentially having clients in the future or maybe having it as like a side thing. I don't really know. I'm kind of seeing where this takes me. I mean, yeah, that, that checks out right now. We, we kind of are in a, in a phase of just discovering what, what the next part of our lives look like. So um, yeah, let's see what happens. What the hell? I'm I'm down for anything. It's funny because I think if you had, if someone had told me a year ago, like, Hey, guess what, Lauren, you're going to be doing, you're going to know Reiki in a year from now. I'd be like, what are you talking about? I've never even had a session before. I don't even know what Reiki really is. So that would be shocking to me. Um, so it's been kind of interesting to follow this path and it's really only been the last couple of months that we've even talked about Reiki. And then it was just like, oh, I must learn this. And I don't know why, but I'm just kind of following it and going like, well, this is part of this journey. That's kind of also why we started this podcast. Right. Right. So I saw, I saw you doing Reiki on, um, our daughter and, I saw the aftermath and someone who's usually very like uh, intense and ADD seemed very chill mm-hmm. and had um, a big old smile on her face. I love you, daddy. Oh, that's nice. That's <laughs> nice to hear. Especially before bed. Cause she, she can sometimes get a little crazy yeah. and like not really want to go to bed and all that. She's five and a half. So um, our daughter Jean is, yeah, she's, she can be nuts. We love her, but she has a lot of energy. So she was acting crazy two nights ago. And I was like, Hey, can I do Reiki? Also, you have to ask for someone's permission, which she gave me permission. And I did a little, maybe 10 minute session on her. And she went from wild child to totally calm. She was like, I feel sleepy now. And I'm like, it did its thing. Take note, parents. (laughs) Learn Reiki for your child. Please. I'm really excited about that, though. I'm always like, I'm not coming at this from a skeptic, uh, or I should say I'm not coming at any of this from the position of a doubter, but I do like some some proof. And, you know, between, it's just in the last few days, between you being able to, you know, help my headache, which usually I have those things all day long once I have one, and then seeing how uh, Jean behaved 
differently after you gave it to her. It's the proof's right there in the pudding. Yeah. Those couple of things got me really excited and just made me feel really confident that this is something like if this has only been three days and I can keep practicing and working with it and start seeing even more powerful changes, I can't even imagine in in a couple months even how that would be or in two years or whatever. Do you feel different? I do, actually. Yeah. I feel attuned. Uh-huh. No, I feel lighter, more peaceful, and a little more connected. I do, truly. It was a it was a really interesting weekend. Coming back to the reality of two small kids, being back, working a job and all that stuff, the day-to-day life, I'm just like more at peace with things and my responses are not heavy with anxiety or you know, just frustration, agitation, anything like that, which I'm not, it's not like I'm operating on that level all the time, but with two small kids, like you can get caught up in just brush your teeth, you know, that kind of stuff. So I feel a lot less of that because of the peaceful meditations and the attunement and just kind of clearing out some stuff. And there's like a whole healing process that comes with learning and having access to the Reiki energy. Everybody, thank you for listening to this episode. We'll keep you updated on Lauren's uh, Reiki advancements and what's next. Yeah, we love you. Bye. Thank you for listening. Visit www.clairvoyaging.com for show notes, merch, or just to say hi. If you'd like to support our journey, visit www.buymeacoffee.com backslash clairvoyaging. This has been a production of Wayfeather Media.